Hello everyone, welcome to a discussion of star systems in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Recently I've been pondering JNSQ, which is a particular mod that modifies the Kerbin system, scales it up, and makes things a little bit more realistic, and using that with realism overhaul instead of real solar system. But there was something about JNSQ that uh, it just didn't inspire me the same way. I really wanted a real-life star system to work off of, and so I decided to take a look at the TRAPPIST-1 system. And there are actually two mods that are available that turn the Kerbin system into the TRAPPIST-1 system. One scales it full-sized, and that, well, for reasons that I'll get into, uh, may be a little bit uh, daunting, but also, for some reason, it placed the space center on the fourth planet instead of the third planet, which I felt was a little bit... Uh, dissatisfactory, personally. And then the other mod, so that mod, uh, the first mod, was called Trappist Visions. And then the second mod was called Seven Worlds Around Slippest One. And that one scaled the Trappist system planets down by a factor of 10 uh, to fit the Kerbin scaling. And, of course, that didn't quite work for me, but I could scale them up again. But then I realized something about the Trappist system, so I decided to make my own version of the Trappist system. I decided to do a Copernicus configuration, rescale them, but I got through about four planets before realizing that this was a bad idea. And <laughs> the, the reason it's a bad idea, okay, so I did Moho, Eve, Kerbin, and Duna. That is why you can't see the orbits of Moho, Eve, Kerbin and Duna right now. You can see Drez there, Jewel, and Elu. I have not modified them. Uh, the thing is, the Trappist system is really small, which is why I thought it would be a good thing. You know, uh, we want small for Kerbin, or for the Kerbal system. It makes it a lot more interesting. It gets things done a little bit faster. However, it's a matter of the, the size of these things. So, taking a look at... Oop, so, Moho here, as Trappist 1b, would have a surface gravity of 1.1g. That's right, it has a surface gravity higher than Earth's. Its radius is actually larger than Earth. So its orbital velocity would be larger than Earth. And that's hard. That makes Moho very hard. And then we have Eve. You can see where Gilly is compared to the size of this. Yes, it's also about the size of Earth. Uh, and it also has a gravity about the same as Earth. And so its over velocity is also about the same as Earth. And then we get to the new Kerbin. Well, Kerbin's actually the smallest, uh, uh, or the Trappist 1D is actually the smallest, which is convenient. Uh, the radius is smaller than Earth's, which is uh, 6,000 something. And I did have to do the calculations. So 6,360 kilometers or something like that in radius. And then uh, the gravity is, of course, less. So uh, the amount you need to get into orbit around it is not too bad. It's probably about 5,000 or so. So it's about the same as JNSQ Kerbin. Uh, so that's good in a way, but it's all the... And then uh, I haven't moved the Moon or Minmus, so they're really tight in. I just moved the four planets here. And then Duna over here, as TRAPPIST-1e, has 5,851 and the surface gravity of 0.82. So it's actually bigger than Kerbin, and has a higher orbital velocity, and so you're going to need more than 6,000 over there. So, yeah. And then the, the, the problem is that the other three end up being about the same, too. And they really don't have a whole lot of room for moons. Generally speaking, these moons would probably be crushed or something. Uh, so, But we could place the moons. I mean, there's, there's not uh, with n-body physics or anything like that. So we can... Keep the moons around Jewel and all, but there isn't much variation in the planets, right? They're all about the same size uh, in the TRAPPIST-1 system. And that made me wonder if it's really worth it. Uh, should we do the TRAPPIST-1 system? Whether it's 1.10 scale or whether it's full scale. I mean, 1.10 scale will be easier, but there's not much variation. They're all about the same size. Uh, and actually, Kerbin is the smallest if it's the third planet. Uh, but... Yeah, so I got through four planets wondering about this situation. Now, thinking about it, if the planets are that big and you're trying to land on them, it sort of means that you're 
forced to make bases, right? You're not landing on one of these places, let's say Duna, and getting off there easily. I mean, it's harder to get off of this Duna, the fourth planet in the Trappist system, than it is to, and actually Ike is inside Duna right now. <laughs> let's not talk about that. Um, it's harder to get off of Duna like this than it is to get off of Mars. And as a result, you're probably not going to carry all that fuel with you. It's going to be hard to get the Delta V to get into orbit. And so you have to plan to make bases in order to get in situ resource utilization going. And that's the only way you can explore these worlds. So that might be considered a plus side uh, in that there is no option. I mean, you can build a remarkably huge rocket and do that sort of thing. But really, in terms of making an elegant sort of space program, there's no option but to actually make bases on these things. So that's a thought. That, that might be a positive, but I don't think it's... Um, I don't think it's like approachable for everybody else. That's the one thing I wanted from JNSQ or some, I was hoping that the Trappist system would provide it, but it doesn't, uh, that it would be a approachable alternative to stock. Uh, but I, I don't see that this is approachable, uh, approachable alternatives to stock. If we scale it down to one tenth, it, it still doesn't have, it doesn't have any interest left, right? There's no point because all the planets seem to be the same or in very close relationship to each other. They're not varying in gravity that much or size that much. So that's a problem. The other problem is, uh, well, I, I only rescaled Kerbin, but for some reason the bloody space center is floating. <laughs> uh, the land's over there somewhere. How did this happen? I didn't even change where things are at all. I just said that the radius of Kerbin was different. But now, now it's over water. It shouldn't be over water. They are, these are things that I'm trying to learn about Copernicus. Because Coper I haven't fiddled around with Copernicus, but I want to fiddle around with Copernicus. And, well, the space center's right there. But, yeah, it's not supposed to be over water. Um, well, so that's another problem. Anyway, so this has been a brief discussion of the TRAPPIST-1 system. And the problems with it as far as making it game-worthy, if you will. Uh, would it be interesting for people to play in? And maybe I'm just going to go with JNSQ after all, since that seems to be the best sort of... best sort of medium. But uh, it would have been nice to have an actual star system. Yep, but Trappist-1... I thought it would be cute. I thought it'd be nice, small, and cute, but it turns out that it's it's problematic. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.